I have just disembarked the very first cruise of my life. I cannot wait to show you all of our adventures on this seven night Caribbean cruise we took with celebrity on their Apex ship, as well as all of the fun we got up to in these cruise ports of Key West, Belize, Cozumel, and Grand Cayman. I was nervous on embarkation day. I was worried we wouldn't be able to find the cruise terminal and for some reason we were gonna miss our cruise, but the signage in Fort Lauderdale is very good and the Celebrity Cruise Terminal kind of blew me away from the beginning. It's absolutely gorgeous and our security screening was extremely fast. I mean, in under five minutes, we were already boarding the ship. We got in about noon and the first thing we did was go to our room just to take a chance to see if we could put our stuff down and luckily our keys were sitting right outside the door. This is your standard king room. Now we did opt for the floor to ceiling window. We thought it might let in a little bit more light and maybe make me a little less nervous for my first cruise. I really liked the layout that they had. It made the room feel more spacious and the decor was more elevated. I don't know how else to describe it. It, it was more mature, I guess, without being old and stale. Um, I loved the green color palette. In your room, they give you a couple snacks and bottles of water, but understand that these are extra, even though we had an all included package. But I loved the storage, including this area to plug all of your stuff in and keep it inside the box so your cabin doesn't look quite as messy. There is a nice long couch for you to sit on just to kind of get a change of pace and maybe sit and drink your coffee in the morning and overlook your window. The pillows were lush and the bed was very comfortable. They give you quite a bit of storage, more storage than I expected to have. I also appreciated the plugs next to the bed as well as the extra storage because I carry a lot of stuff next to my bedside table. Inside the closet, you get a ton of hangers, a security locker, some drawers, and a full length mirror. But if you'd like another full length mirror, push this little table in here and you'll get a full length lit up mirror inside of your room to check your outfit. However, the showstopper in this room might be this bathroom. It's absolutely gorgeous, so much space, premium decor in here. I mean, look at the full length shower, glass doors. They do have shampoo and body wash on the inside if you'd like to use theirs, but you can also bring your own. I mean, for my first cruise, I really think I'm getting spoiled here and it's gonna spoil me for any other cruise line that I cruise after this one. After we sat our stuff down, we had to do our muster drill. Now, Celebrity has moved its muster drills to the kind that you watch all of your safety information on the app before you even get to the terminal, or you can watch the safety information on your television in your room. Then you go down to your muster station, you sign in, and you're done. It's very easy. I highly recommend downloading the Celebrity app before you get on the ship. It's got so much information, including your muster station in case you forget, but you can also control your cabin lights, your temperature in your cabin from this app. You can see the daily schedule. You can look at menus for restaurants, and you can even look at deck maps in case you're looking for something in particular or you're just trying to kind of orient yourself. It'll tell you where you're going to be going the next day and what time you can get off ship, what time you need to be back on ship, and you can chat with other people that you meet along the cruise or other people in your party. While we're talking about the Celebrity app, you do have some options for internet access. Just click the internet button on your app and you can choose between basic, maybe a one hour, 24 hours, or the entire voyage. And then you can choose how many devices you want to be able to access internet on your cruise. We booked the all included package, which included basic internet for the both of us. Both Jeff and I could access the internet, just basic stuff, not probably streaming, on one device per person. Okay, we've made it on board the Celebrity Apex. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little overwhelmed. It's just a lot. If you've never been on a cruise ship before, it's a lot. There's a lot to see, there's a lot to do. Um, but I think right now we're gonna try to go maybe to one of the bars out here, get a little snack, because we really haven't eaten today. Maybe get a drink, and there's a sail away party at four. Y'all, we are moving. This is absolutely 
wild for me to all of a sudden I heard some horns and I was like, is that us? Because there's a lot of boats or ships around here. And all of a sudden Jeff's like, nope, it's us, we're moving. And I'm freaking out, but it's so cool. So I don't think I mentioned like, we were trying to stay up top for when we set sail because we didn't know exactly what time. So we're on the magic carpet and the magic carpet on the apex is this part of a, I don't even know what to call it, but it like, it will float up and down the ship at certain times and it hangs off the side of the ship. It's wild. But we were just sitting here um, trying to get a drink and all of a sudden you hear these horns and it's like, is that us? Or we moving? This is the coolest thing ever. This has been quite the first day. I so far love cruising because everything is at your fingertips. It's essentially a hotel, a floating hotel, but with way more like a floating resort, but cooler because then every day you wake up in a new destination. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna let you go for now and then we'll be back tomorrow. We're gonna be landing in Key West, which we've actually done before. So we've got a couple of places that I cannot wait to take you to, including the best key lime pie I've ever had. Otherwise, I'm going to go take a shower and go to bed and we will see you in the morning. Bye. Hey y'all, let's talk about one of my favorite topics, food. Now, I didn't know this before getting on this cruise, but apparently Celebrity is known for their food. They have won four consecutive years, gold award, restaurant design, etc., etc., from Travel Weekly's Magellan Awards. Of course, one of our favorite spots on the Apex is Cafe El Baccio. This is your cafe to get your coffee needs met, get a couple of pastries. They are open from most of the morning, lunch, dinner, and on into the late evening, which we found to be helpful when we needed a little late night snack. Now some choices for your specialty dining, and these are the restaurants that do have an upcharge, usually around 50, 60 bucks per person per dining. One of them is called Fine Cut Steakhouse. Obviously, it is what it is. It's a steakhouse. You're gonna have a wide selection of cuts of meat, fresh, premium seafood. There's something for anybody at this restaurant. Le Grand Bistro is inspired, obviously, by a French bistro. You're gonna have things like lobster bisque, different flats du jour, sandwiches, and wines and cocktails. This is also where the specialty dining option for Le Petit Chef is located. Le Petit Chef is one of my favorite things we've ever done. It's a little animated palette where a tiny animated chef comes on your plate, he cooks you food, and then the servers bring out the dish that your animated chef has cooked for you. We just found it extremely entertaining. The storyline was really fun and I would pay extra to do it again in a heartbeat. Raw on Five is gonna be kind of like your sushi restaurant. Choices of oysters, crab, lobsters. They also have a portion of Raw on Five that extends out into the magic carpet. So on some evenings during dinner dining, the magic carpet will come down and it will be an extended outdoor seating to give you some fresh air while you're on your cruise at dinner. The rooftop garden grill is very beautiful. It's on the top deck so that you get a lot of fresh air and you're surrounded by real greenery. Think of this like a gourmet backyard barbecue favorite option. We didn't get to eat at Eden Restaurant, but next time we certainly will because this place is an experience. Again, you are just surrounded by all of this lush greenery. These are real plants. And the experience in Eden is supposed to be inspired by cuisines and regions around the world. And then don't forget in Eden, you get this beautiful aft view of the ocean behind you. It's so beautiful. I cannot wait to go back and try this experience. Now, if you're staying in a suite on Celebrity Apex, you have the option to dine at Blue. Celebrity describes Blue as a private dining venue with spa style cuisine. It is available to aqua class cabins and other suites. And they say they specialize in something called clean cuisine, which translates to a way of preparing food that's fresh and inventive. 
Another restaurant dedicated to the cruise line's sweet class is called Lumine. Cruise Critic describes Lumine as a refined space dressed in the luminescent metallics and lacquered black decor. Sweet guests are able to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner here at Lumine on a rotating menu. Complimentary dining on the Celebrity Apex starts at the Ocean View Cafe. This is your buffet. This is where you're going to find pretty much all of your included eats and drinks, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I love the options and they really try to focus on meals and culinary cuisine from around the world. And they do have an ice cream shop in here as well. But when you're in the buffet, don't forget to go all the way back to the aft section of the buffet because they have a special pizza area and the pizza here is phenomenal. Complimentary dinner dining on Celebrity Apex breaks the typical one room dining space up into four. These restaurants consist of Cyprus, Cosmopolitan, Normandy, and Tuscany. And as the names suggest, each one of these dining options has a different culinary cuisine from around the world. Real quick, I'll show you a little taste of what you can expect from each of these restaurants. And then as this video goes on and in my part two video, I'll give you a more in-depth idea of what kind of foods are on offer at these restaurants. So stay tuned. The first restaurant we ate at was Cyprus. This is the Mediterranean fare. Think a Greek heritage, which is probably one of my most favorite cuisines of all time. The main menu's focus is seafood and it features simple, clean dishes that celebrate food and beverages of the Mediterranean region. Next up, we have Cosmopolitan. A celebrity describes this as new American with global influences. And I would agree that the food here is inventive. <laughs> Maybe not like some of the menus that you've seen before. That could be a good thing or a bad. I'll let you make the decision when I show you more about what we ate. Next up, we have Normandy, and this is the contemporary French cuisine. It's modern, upscale, and refined, and it gives you the romance of springtime in Paris, says Celebrity. And last but definitely not least is Tuscan. Of course, this is going to be your Italian fare. The meals here include Italian-inspired dishes, homemade pastas, and rustic flair. Have I got news for you. I am now hosting group trips, and the first place that we're going is the magical land of fire and ice, Iceland. February 4th through the 10th, 2024, we will be adventuring out into Iceland. We're going to see 14 different types of landscapes there, including geysers, waterfalls, black sand beaches, maybe a volcano, glaciers, and natural hot springs like the Blue Lagoon. If Iceland has ever been on your bucket list, I encourage you to click the link down in the description and sign up to come on the trip with me. We have just disembarked off the apex into Key West. We love Key West. I'm gonna tell you, we've already been here once before. We're so excited. And the first thing we've got to do when we come to Key West is get some key lime pie. So we're gonna to go to a place, one of our favorite places to get key lime pie. Come with us. Key West is one of our favorite places to visit here in the United States. It's only about seven square miles big. So you've got to think of it like, kind of like a small town. And I think that's why we like it so much. First thing you're going to notice when you get into Key West, there are chickens <laughs> everywhere, chickens and roosters. You are going to hear those roosters crowing at dawn. You're going to hear them at lunch. You're going to hear them in the evening, but that's just part of being in Key West. Die-hard Key Westers call this the Conch Republic. Now it's conch with a hard K, not conch. I used to say conch too, don't feel bad. Uh, you know, it's named after the conch shell, but die-hard Key Westers call this the Conch Republic. I've heard rumors that if you were born in Key West, it's the only way you can be like an actual quote unquote conch. But if you've lived there for at least, I don't know, seven years, they'll take you in as one of their own and call you a freshwater conch. I don't know anything about that, but I just thought it was kind of a funny rumor that I heard. 
There are 42 bridges connecting Key West to the mainland of Florida. It does take quite a bit of ways to get down here. Um, a lot of people will come into like the Miami, Fort Lauderdale, you know, one of those airports, rent a car and drive down. It is a very scenic and beautiful drive. We've done it before. You can also fly into Key West if that's something that you want to do. Of course, we're here on a one day adventure with our cruise, but we have been here before right at the beginning of 2020 and we all know how that year ended. As far as getting around here in Key West, I think it's a very walkable city. We usually walk everywhere. You can also rent bicycles, you can rent motorcycles, you can rent golf carts and side-by-side, -side, little scooters, cars. To be perfectly honest, if Jeff and I were going to come stay here for a week, I would probably just rent something like a side-by-side -side or a golf cart and call it good. Maybe even a bicycle, but like I said, it, this place is not very big. It's extremely walkable, but I think a golf cart or something like that would be make it extremely easy to get around. So that's what I would suggest if you're gonna come stay in Key West for some time. Some fun things to do here, of course, is to go visit the 90 miles to Cuba big buoy. We did that last time we were here. There is a very long line, so just come to expect it. It doesn't really matter what time of day you go. There's usually a long line to take your picture, and that's just how it's gonna be because it is a tourist spot. Some other places to see are the Ernest Hemingway house. Ernest Hemingway was a famous writer who did live down here in Key West, and the place is famous for these like six-toed cats. Another fun thing that Jeff and I did last time we were here is go jet skiing. We thought this was the most fun thing we had ever done and we really chose it because Key West although it is known to be like a beach town there aren't a ton of actual big sandy beaches like one would expect. Another thing to see is the Harry S. Truman Little White House and it's the state of Florida's only presidential site. It was originally constructed in 1890 and has been used by six American presidents. The most important was obviously Harry S. Truman. Other presidents have included William Taft, Dwight Eisenhower, John Kennedy, and former presidents Jimmy Carter and Bill Clinton. Another thing I'd like to do next time we come is take a sunset catamaran tour around the island sip some champagne, and just look at the beautiful architecture from the history of Key West. Of course, if you looked into Key West, you'll know doing anything down Duval Street is pretty popular with tourists. Duval Street is essentially just like, a, I don't know, a mile long pub crawl, but it is so much fun for nightlife, and I highly suggest trying it out at least one night during your visit. Of course, in my opinion, you can't come to Key West and miss some of this awesome food. Some main things that you should try down here, of course, is literally any seafood you can get your hands on. I would highly recommend trying, again, the conch fritters. Those are kind of like hush puppies, but they're made out of conch. I'll talk about that here in a minute. Checking out the key lime pie. Although key limes originated here in Key West, they are mostly no longer harvested here, but the key lime pie is still very much a part of Key West and you've gotta try it when you come down to visit. One of our favorite places to come and get brunch or of course key lime pie would be Blue Heaven. We found this place the last time we were here, but it seems to have grown in popularity. They do have a little pop-up shop across the street from the main restaurant if you just want to get like a cocktail and some key lime pie. But if you want to sit down and eat, I recommend making a reservation first because they were super busy when we visited this time. Here in Key West, you can pretty much get a drink anywhere. You do not have to go all the way down to Duval Street if that's not, you know, in your course. Pretty well just walking down the street. They've got tons of people with fresh juices. They will carve out a pineapple for you. I stopped at this cute little stand on the side of the street and got a rum runner. I got a frozen rum runner. This is a pretty popular cocktail down here. Of course, it's got rum in it. Um, and I believe it's got grenadine and banana liqueur. Some of them have blackberry in them, which is kind of fun. But this one's really good. And she gave me a little floater of a little bit more rum. I feel like you can't come to Key West and not eat some conch fritters. So the first thing we're going to do, we're here at DJ's Clam Shack. We're going to eat these freshly made deep fried conch fritters. These are made from conch. I, I know you've seen a conch shell somewhere. They use them for like musical instruments or decorations. But these little marine gastropods live inside these big conch shells and that's what they make these fritters out of. So they take the little critter 
and they chop it up and they mix it with usually cornmeal and some spices, garlic and stuff like that. And then they deep fry them. And then you get these awesome fritters and ours is served over a bed of french fries or you can get coleslaw if you want to. And then they've got a sauce that looks really, really good. And I guess this place was featured on Diners, Drive-Ins and Dies with Guy Fieri. I had no idea. I don't watch the show. Sorry, Guy. <laughs> if you're watching this, you're probably not. But if you are, I had no idea that you came here. But uh, yeah, so I guess that that's maybe why they're popular. But I think it's really just because these taste so awesome. Definitely try some conch fritters whenever you come to Key West. Speaking of food, something you can do when you come here is take a food tour. The last time we were here, we took this awesome like four hour food tour. They took us around all different types of cuisine here that's famous in Key West, or maybe just stuff that was really awesome. We tried some fantastic tacos, but take a food tour while you're here. You will not be disappointed. And I'll put a link to some food tours and bicycle tours that we recommend down in the description of the video. Another thing you can't miss when coming to Key West is the Cuban coffee. Don't forget, you're only 90 miles to Cuba, y'all. So check out the Cuban coffee when you come here. There are tons of places to get Cuban coffee, and I think they're all amazing. I know last time we were here, we checked out Key West Cuban coffee shop. Uh, we also went to El Mesin de Pepe. There's so many great places. This time we're trying out Cuban Coffee Queen. Now Cuban coffee is also called a cafecito. It's a type of espresso drink originating in Cuba and it has been sweetened with demerara sugar during brewing. Tell me if I'm saying that wrong. Demerara, demerara. Um, it's typically made with dark roasted finely ground coffee beans. It is a shot to the heart. It will definitely wake you up. You cannot miss the Cuban coffee when you come to Key West. If you would love for me to do a dedicated video to Key West, let me know down in the comments some of your questions, the things you want to see or know about. Again, we have gone to so many other places that I haven't even talked about right now in this video, and I would love to share those things with you if you're interested. So let me know down in the comments. Don't forget, some of my Patreon and YouTube memberships include a postcard from my travels. I'll put a link if you want to sign up and get a postcard next time I go abroad. Coming up next in part two will be days three and four. This will be our very first sea day. I'm gonna show you around the pool and show you some things you can get up to after dark. And then day four is a fun adventure snorkeling in Belize. You do not wanna miss this. Click over into the video on your screen and I'll see you over there.